Hello, my name is Nikezi Ndeza. I am a social studies teacher with the Buffalo Public Schools. I work at uh, Leonardo da Vinci High School as a global studies teacher. Today, I'm gonna be presenting to you how to write an Enduring Issues essay. An Enduring Issues essay is something very important that we have to practice as for the new state exams. It is a new requirement that all students must do in order to be successful on the state exam. Now, the reason why we are doing this today is we're trying to give you uh, another example virtually and through videos at how we can show you to do the, uh, how to be able to do this essay without having any problems on your end so that you can see a nice lesson and be able to follow along on your computers or smartphones or whatever device that you're using. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about what it is an enduring issue is. There are a lot of things that are going on in this world today, especially with the COVID-19. We have a lot of problems that we haven't been able to solve in this world. And when we say enduring issue, it's something that we're currently dealing with. It could be something that we've dealt with in the past. Whatever it is, it's, it's some kind of a problem. Okay? So an enduring issue is a challenge or problem that a society has faced and debated or discussed across time. An enduring issue is one that many societies have attempted to address with varying degrees of success. Like I said before, it could be a variety of things, but what we must understand first is it is a problem. Okay? Now, there are many different kinds of enduring issues. One of them is called conflict. Conflict could be violent. A conflict could be uh, physical. But a conflict is a series of disagreements or arguments. There can be a conflict between individuals, groups of people, and even nations. Okay? Um, some examples of this that you may have seen uh, during your classes or in a state exam could be the Enlightenment ideas. The fact that the Enlightenment ideas caused revolutions, such as the French Revolution. Um, we can talk about the storming of the Bastille, the reign of terror, the fall of Napoleon, all of these ideas were some kind of a conflict, okay? And moving forward, we have many other revolutions such as the revolutions of 1848 during the time of nationalism. We have the Crimean War, the Opium Wars, the Boxer Rebellion, Boer Wars, assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, which we all know began World War I, okay? So, just to name a few, there are many, many different kinds of conflicts that we could see within the idea of a conflict when it comes to an enduring issue. Now, that's just one of several different types of enduring issues. On the exam, you'll be asked to pick an enduring issue. So we have to first go through what all these enduring issues are. Now, the next enduring issue could be desire for power. Now, that sounds like uh, many of the problems that we see today that actually cause uh, future wars or they cause conflicts. Now, the reason why I have these interesting pictures up here, such as the Sith Lord, because if you, anyone has watched Star Wars, they desire power. And anyone that desires power is going to do whatever they have to do to keep that power, whether you're an absolute monarch, whether you're a dictator, whether you're uh, a president, who is seeking extra power, you're going to find a way to maintain your power. People who have power do not like to give it up without a fight. So power is the influence or control over the behavior of people, and it is part of every human interaction. Like I said, we see this all the time. You can see the effects of power in your relationships with your family and your friends, and in schools, sports, business, and government. We see this every single day. It's a part of our life. We all go through this and don't even think about it. Now, here are some specific examples that could be where desire of power could be coming from. And these are topics that you will be seeing throughout the year so that you have some examples to work with. Okay? Specific examples in history could be uh, some monarchs pushing back on the Enlightenment ideas. Enlightenment despots or places where they were hiding and speaking about these secretive ideas that no one was supposed to be talking about at those times. Tensions between three estates. These are the three social classes in France, the first, second, and third estates. 
one estate has more power than the other, the other, dis other estates or social classes, they also desire power for themselves. Okay? The rise and fall of Maximilian Robespierre. If you remember from the French Revolution, he is the one that went around chopping off everyone's head during the Reign of Terror with that guillotine. He desired power. He became a dictator. He turned France into a police state. Okay? And as we move forward, there are other examples of revolutions, the spread of the Industrial Revolution, how it caused power conflicts between different groups of people, which will eventually cause World War I due to imperialism. Uh, during the time of nationalism with Germany becoming a country, we have blood and iron, the fact that Germany wanted to become a country versus being a separate group of states or kingdoms. So they themselves desired power, and in the way to get their power is they had to wage war on some of their neighbors. Okay? And we will see more and more the rise of Stalin, the rise of Hitler, any of those people, if you were to see them on an exam, you can definitely talk about them as a desire for power, or you could even use them as starting a conflict, because we all know many of these men are the people who started conflicts. Okay? Here's another one that I like because it speaks to the situation that we're having today, especially with a lot of people losing their jobs. We have an inequity or an unequal distribution of resources. And equity, inequity means it is a lack of fairness or justice. When there is inequity, one person or group of people do not have as much power or opportunity as others. That could be socially, that could be uh, financially. Uh, if you see here, we're looking at poverty in parts of the world versus poverty uh, and the less poverty that we see in places that are more developed, such as the United States. Okay, this is more or less a third world nation. Okay, um, we see here people fighting with uh, the people who run the economy. It could be a bank, it could be um, just the whole system is not fair. So you have people saying, hey, we're doing all this work and other people are benefiting from it and we're not getting the, anything from all this work. Okay, people are fighting about low wages. Okay, having to pay high, high rent, okay, that's an inequity. They can't afford it, but yet they have to have somewhere to live. So this is another example of what we would see. Uh, here is another example of what you would see during the Middle Ages, uh, during times of revolution, where you had the, the very rich aristocratic families. Aristocrat means rich landowners. They owned everything, and then everyone else was working for them. And you see them living very lavishly, but someone behind the scenes is doing all the work for them. Okay, here's another one, okay. We have a need for an impact of innovation. Innovation means something new, okay. And when we say something new, it could be an invention like you see here. It could be a new way of thinking, all right. Uh, innovation is a new method of addressing a problem. Innovations have positive and negative impacts, okay. Now there are seven of these enduring issues that we're going to be speaking about and please stay tuned to joining us uh, and not leaving your, where you are and leaving your seat because we have more to show you about what these enduring issues are, um, how these enduring issues will fit within the uh, constructing an essay. So okay, so please stay tuned and we will continue to talk about what this all means. Welcome back. We are back and we're going to continue this conversation about enduring issues and the problems and many types of problems that we would see with enduring issues. Now again, an enduring issue is a problem or challenge that a society or a government or group of people are dealing with. We first talked about conflict. We talked about um, how conflicts are different wars, desire for power, and now we're talking about the need for impact and innovation. Now this is referring to new ideas, of, new ideas, a new way of doing something, a new way of thinking, okay? Because sometimes it could be a new idea that has a positive effect, 
It could be a new idea that could have a negative effect, but whatever it is, it's a new way of doing things in the ways that you were previously doing things. Okay. Now, impact of interconnectedness. Interconnectedness is the state of having connections or relationships with other people. We do this all the time. We are connected to each other in many, many different ways. Um, for example, the more people you know from a neighborhood, okay, the more interconnected you are with it. So we're talking about relationships between groups of people. The next one is impact of ideas and beliefs. Now we could go on for days about impact of ideas and beliefs. Depending on the idea, depending on the belief, you can influence lots of people to do different things. Okay? Um, our ideas and beliefs shape the way we look at the world. Okay? Uh, ideas and beliefs can come from one's conclusions, from one's observations. It could be from your religious background because if you believe in certain uh, religions, you believe and think certain ways. Okay? You may conduct your life a certain way. Uh, the way you were brought up by your parents, books you may read, or the friends or people you associate with. Okay. Environmental impact, this is a big one. Um, this is something that changes the way we look at our world every single day. Our environment is the area around us in which we live. Okay. We are affected by our environment and we have an effect on it. We sure do. This is true of your local environment, your home, your classroom, uh, and your neighborhood. Sometimes you may see your mom or dad change the house around several different times, whether in the spring. Um, you may see areas being cleared out to be used for different things, like we need to use the trees. You clear the trees out so you can build some more homes, build more roads, clearing rainforests out. Now, with that all being said, there could be a good thing that's being done and it helps people in the environment or it could be a negative impact towards that environment. Okay? For example, there are some places in the world that do not have sewage. Okay? Or they have rain like in India, they have the big monsoons, these are torrential downpours. It happens for several months. It rains, the water floods, sewage comes out. Okay? The, you could say that there's an environmental impact from the monsoon rains. Okay? So, we are speaking more essentially about agriculture. As you can see here, this up here, you see some kind of a tropical storm. Over here, you see an area where there's a, an abundant rainforest with lots of arable land. Arable is a word that you should know, very farmable, where this area is very, very dry. There's an environmental impact there. So examples that you would see in history could be agricultural revolution, where the change from farming in small groups as to farming in big farms, they brought all the farms together and many of the people moved to the cities. That's a huge example, especially with the new technology. You're going to farm smarter and better. People are going to live longer, so people are able to find better jobs. Okay? Um, pollution during the Industrial Revolution, that was a very big, big, big negative thing. Uh, during this time, you had way too many people that moved to the cities. There wasn't enough uh, infrastructure. Infrastructure means buildings. They didn't build enough buildings. And the ones that they did build, they were not built with specific building codes like we have today. If you go in any elevator, any restaurant, you'll notice that there is some kind of a piece of paper on the corner of the wall, and that's the health inspector has been there to say that this place is safe to be in. We didn't have this kind of thing going on during those days, so those buildings were very hazardous. Um, you also had lots of pollution. The ground that people walked on was mud. They didn't have paved roads. Uh, they were walking to the factories first thing in the morning, past garbage, past rats. The water was infested with something called, um, I forget the name of it, but the water was very polluted and they could not drink the water. And what will happen if they drank the water, they would get very, very sick. So many, many different things. Another thing that you could say that was an environmental impact, uh, it was called cholera. Cholera was the problem that they had with the water. Okay? And it's still in some third world countries today. There was a negative effect with the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In fact, a couple days ago on August 9th, that was the day that Hiroshima had a bomb dropped on them. Okay? Uh, happens to be my dad's birthday, that's why I remember. But uh, 
Negative effects of that could be the pollution and the radiation towards the people of Japan. Okay, so moving forward. Scarcity is a very, very big problem in addition to uh, what we say here about the environmental impact. Scarcity could come from an environmental impact. What we see here is scarcity is a state of not having enough of something. Okay, uh, we're probably experiencing that a lot today with job shortages and, and the fact that um, prices of meat and different things in the stores are going up. There's going to be shortages of some, short, of some sort as, it, as we look at it now. Um, there could be a beef shortage, I was hearing at one point. Everything we use in our daily life comes from the earth, and there is a limited supply of resources on this planet. Some places have access to more water than others. Some have access to oil. Since resources are scarce, we have to trade for them. And as you can see in these pictures, I mean, imagine going to the grocery store at the beginning of COVID-19. You couldn't find anything. The grocery stores look like that. And then you have some places where they're not getting enough water, and this is how they have to figure out how to farm. We have an area here where there's a shortage of water and they're having problems getting enough water to feed their people. There's been wars fought over scarcity of water, like they did in Sudan in Darfur. Okay, population growth, that's a big one right there as well. Okay, I think we've done six so far. Population growth occurs when more people are born than die and for most of global history, the number of people on Earth has increased. That picture right there is in West Africa. It's Lagos, Nigeria. Nigeria is the most populated country in West Africa, and they've got more than several million people living there. It's a very, very, very crowded place, and when you have a crowded place, the amount of resources that every person gets is going to be very limited because there's too much competition, there's too many people, and the population is growing much, 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 much faster than the amount of supplies and essentials that people need each day, okay? With an agricultural revolution, when people are eating better and there's less disease going around, it means that they're having more children. And when you have more children, that means that you have more people in the population, and when there's more people in the population, that means they need a job, and you're gonna have a teeter-totter effect where you're gonna have more people than you have of enough resources. So just stay with us. We are continuing this wonderful conversation about enduring issues. In the next segment, we're going to be looking at how an essay will be constructed as we go through the next several lists of enduring issues, just so you see how they correlate with one another. And then I'm going to give you an example of some documents, and we're going to go through and figure out which enduring issues there would be before we set up the essay. Welcome back. I'm glad you could join us. I was getting worried about you. Okay, we, we cannot leave without me finishing getting through this wonderful lesson. Again, my name is Mr. Endeza, Nikezi Endeza from Da Vinci High School, Buffalo Public School, School 212. We are doing Enduring Issues. Um, there's a number of series that will be going on, so don't, don't just think that just this one video is it. There are many more to come because we want to make sure that you get the proper materials so that you can be able to do your work and be successful. So we ended finishing talking about uh, scarcity of the enduring issues and how scarcity is a problem and that we don't always have the same balance of, of needs and wants and how some have more than others. Now we're going to actually look at some documents that you would see on your exam. Now in the exam you're going to have a part one, about 28 to 30 multiple choice questions, in the second part, you're going to have a CRQ or constructive response questions. These are what they look like. The constructive response questions, I'm not going to really spend too much time going over how to do them. What essentially we're going to be doing is we're going to be using these constructive response questions to decide what we would use inside our Enduring Issues essay. So this first one here is talking about um, 
what happened when Africa had imperialism and how many nations were broken apart and how some groups of people were forced to live with others that may not have uh, been a part of their initial uh, tribe. So this is written by Kwame Nkrumah, uh, the first president of Ghana, when Ghana became independent from Great Britain. And he's talking about how Africa has an abundance of raw materials and resources and that they should not be using them to uh, share with other groups. So it says here, based on the information in the text, explain the author's opinion about the effects of imperialism. And here he talks about how imperialism motivated Africa for its raw materials and cheap labor. That's why people came to Africa, because it was big. And if you don't know, Africa is two and a half to three times the size of the United States. That's how big it is. And it's not, and Africa is not a country. It is a continent. Okay, just remember that, because some people will put that on the exam that Africa is a country, and you're speaking about more than a thousand languages and different groups of people. Okay, so this author is talking about imperialism and how it had a negative effect. Imperialism was a desire for power because the more materials you have, the more resources you can have to build your factory. Okay, so in the next slide, as we see here, it's the Zimmerman note, and for those of you that were able to get through to World War I. The Zimmerman note, it was a telegram that was sent by the Germans to Mexico to get the Mexican uh, government to join Germany during World War I in case Germany were to finish off Europe. They were telling Mexico that they would get the property that they lost during the, uh, the war that they had with the United States. So this was an idea to get the Mexican population to join Germany, which was intercepted by the British and allowed the United States to join the war. So this here is definitely talking about a conflict, but it's also talking about a desire for power. Okay? So this is just talking about how the United States wanted to be neutral and the fact that this happened will force the United States to join this war. Okay? Next one here. If I'm looking at it closely, we're looking at some absolute monarchs here. Peter the Great from Russia, okay, and it's talking here about Constantine de Gunol was one action taken by Peter the Great from his defeat at Narva. Peter the Great was a Russian um, absolute monarch who was desiring warm water ports to trade in, and it talks about what he did against some of the different kings to better his army for him to be able to fight back. I can tell you right now, we're looking at also a conflict and a desire for power because he had to do something to make his army uh, win a war. Okay, here we have some more articles here. Um, this is about the Industrial Revolution and the way that the people were living, the conditions that they had to live in, the fact that people were very, very sick from working in factories that had poor light. They did not have any health insurance. If you got your fingers sliced during a, uh, by working with the machine, you still had to go to work. So about how the necessity for workers, the scarcity of, of uh, certain uh, things that you would find during the Industrial Revolution, okay, the living conditions, the, the bad towns, so all of these present a environmental problem during the Industrial Revolution, okay? And then here, in another document, we're looking at here the scientific revolution, um, the fact that many of these ideas that came from the scientific revolution, okay, the fact that people were challenging ideas that were told to them by people who were not historians or scientists, how they had to think for themselves, how they had to discover things for themselves, all of that is a conflict on its own. Who do you believe? Do you believe those who have researched and done the work? or you believe a book that has not been uh, researched and someone says, for example, the Bible, saying that the Bible said the sky was purple, many people would believe it. But when the scientists came out, they challenged the church and they said, well, this may, there may be more than one color, okay? So, as we move further and further down, there are many, many, many more articles here, many more documents. This is talking about garbage as an environmental problem during the Industrial Revolution. It's showing something very, very similar about how the overcrowding of cities is going to cause some environmental problems. Okay, so 
moving further down, okay? And then another document again about the Industrial Revolution and the problems that not having correct sewers, sewer lines and, and how garbage was put in the wrong place could be a problem for them today. And the fact that also they were working in coal mines which made people sick. So, an enduring issues essay, it's a very important thing to do when you start the essay is you must make sure that you describe what an enduring issue is. Pretend that the person that's reading your essay does not know anything about an enduring issue and you are essentially teaching them what it is. So you have to talk about throughout history, and you can put it in your own words, but this is one of the ways I use it. Throughout history, various problems have come up. These problems are called enduring issues. An enduring issue is a, uh, and then you say what it is, okay? You give your definition. Now, the enduring issue of whatever you saw in those documents, see how I went through the documents and we described what each enduring issue was in each document? I said a couple of them were conflict, a couple of them were environmental and desire for power. Your job is to pick three. Three documents, they could be about three different things. One could be about the Industrial Revolution, but there could have been a conflict. One could have been about World War I, the Zimmerman Note, that could have been a conflict. One could be about Peter the Great and have, how he had a problem getting his army together, that could be a conflict. Or looking for warm water ports. So all of those things, you'd pick those three documents, but you have to label what your problem was. Which enduring issue are you using? Okay. So for the first body paragraph, you again, you label what the enduring issue is, you put the document number, you explain how that enduring issue was affected by people, whichever document it was, and then how the issue has continued to be a problem over time. You will do that for three paragraphs, because there's five paragraphs. Okay. And then lastly, in your conclusion, you're going to restate your opening introduction. You're going to add a fact from each paragraph. And you're going to write a finishing sentence or statement explaining how this enduring issue has been a problem or how it has affected positively or negatively. And you could even use outside information from today or in the past that connects it. Okay, so I hope you learned something about writing this enduring issue. This is very, very important for you. Come to state exam. Um, we thank you so much. Please make sure you stay tuned. We have more and more wonderful videos coming your way. And thank you again for uh, staying tuned to our video here.